Hey everyone, welcome back for another Slim Sports interview. As always, I'm your host, Jay Slim, and joining me today is a thousand yard receiver that is making his way to play at the power five level for Mississippi State. You see him wearing the gear. He dominated this past season for the UTEP Miners. He's a six foot one wide receiver, Kelly Akari. How's it going, Kelly? McConnell out of the shotgun, looking to throw downfield. He's going to air it out. His first deep throw, it's on the money. Kelly Akari, he is gone. Good. How y'all doing today? Thank you for having me. Absolutely, man. Definitely excited to have you on here. You had a crazy good season for the Miners this past season. Obviously, for your team as a whole, uh, wasn't exactly the best of seasons, but for you, you absolutely dominated 1,033 yards on the season, 48 receptions, seven touchdowns. You had six games where you had over 100 yards receiving, just absolutely dominated. Talk to me real quick about this past season at UTEP for yourself, individually and for your team. How would you really describe uh, this past season from both of those standpoints? Uh, individually, uh, it was a blessing uh, to, to show people what I could do and the type of player I am, just put a little spotlight on me, uh, like a welcoming party, like this is who I am, take a notice of me. Uh, as a team, it, it really ain't go as well as we planned it. We expected to do way better, obviously. Like, we came preseason with all the hype. We had the guys. We just, I don't know, just the dice ain't just roll our way. And, and it didn't it fall in our court, pretty much. Yeah, and that's how it goes sometimes. You guys are in a very good conference, Conference USA. I mean, Liberty was at the top of that conference. They're top 25 in the country. So, obviously, very good uh, competition there. And it's not like you guys were getting blown out every game. You had some very close games in that conference. Uh, you yourself, this was your this past season was your second year with the Miners. Your first year, uh, you were you know kind of a role guy. You know, got some yards here and there, two hundred seventy five yards, a touchdown, twenty one receptions. So you saw some time on the field. But obviously, I I said your numbers already a thousand yards this season. Uh, you obviously took a ginormous step up for your team in your uh, senior year, in your fourth year of playing college football. Talk to me real quick about making that jump to be so effective for your team this past season. So fun fact, the first year I was supposed to be that guy just had a lot of <laughs> mental problems going on at the time. So it kind of, uh, in, a, in a sense, like blinded me from what I, what I had to do. And then the playbook was difficult, like, Man, that playbook was hard. It 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 take people about two years to really like settle in that playbook, especially coming from like a JUCO to like the type of playbook that we ran over there. It was very difficult. I I get I was second guessing myself. I was like thinking so much, and that second year, that first year, didn't really go as planned like as I planned or as the coaches planned. And then that second year, I just knew how to turn it up. Like I was like, okay, this this happened. I learned from it. Um, now I just gotta go there, just play with like all the confidence that I knew I had. Cause I already I put in the work. The work ain't no ain't like no problem. Like I was, I was gonna put the work in regardless. But it's just take that jump, like put myself on the map and put put myself on notice. Absolutely, man. You just mentioned uh, a second ago, you know, coming from JUCO, you were at Tyler Junior College uh, the two years before. You redshirted your first year. Uh, which is why you're able to kind of take this fifth year step and go to Mississippi State, where you get to play in the SEC Power Five Conference level. Uh, yeah. During your second year there at Tyler, you had 681 receiving yards, led the team, six touchdowns. Uh, and that's why you were getting recruited by UTEP and all these other schools, obviously. Talk to me real quick about that junior college experience. I've worked with a lot of junior college. I work at a junior college, and I kind of see these underdogs uh, turn into these high level players. Talk to me about the JUCO route for yourself. How do you think that helped get you to where you are now? It pretty much taught me that everybody got their own path in life. Like you can't sit here and compare your path to somebody else because they might have the glamorous path right now, but that don't mean like your path, your destination different. Like at JUCO, you you gotta work. Like you can't you can't slack off because. It's always like somebody out there, like they say at the power five level, somebody's there to take your spot, but amplify that by like 10 because everybody want to feed their family. This is they, they last chance, like, like last chance you like that, that show is real. Like you got dogs in there trying to 
clawed our way out. Some people sleeping in the car. Like my little brother right now, he had Juco and he had to sleep in his car because he ain't had no like no um residence to stay at, trying to make it out. And Juco, he just showed me that you put your head down, you dedicate yourself to your craft and what you want to do in life. And like really told like Juco really showed me how much I wanted to play football, like how much I really love this game of football and how much like this game of football can change my life. So it just made me double down and focus and lock in on what I wanted to do and go get it. That's awesome, man. That's awesome that Juco helped you out in that kind of way. I've seen the junior college level affect so many lives already. Uh, a lot of people that I have on here for interviews are guys I know from the Juco level. And they, I got a lot of friends that are playing pro ball overseas for basketball, playing pro in the NFL. So you definitely are on the right track. So I'm happy for you, man. And I mean, yeah. I talked about your numbers. I do want to point out one specific game where you went off. I'm sure you already know which one I'm talking about. FIU. 223 receiving yards, two touchdowns in that game. Uh, I believe you had a reception that ended up being recorded, 80 yards. Uh, you just absolutely went off in that game. Uh, do you do you remember that at all? What was it about that game where you just it just kind of clicked and you were able to tear up the FIU's defense? I don't know because the year prior, my best game was against FIU. Because the year prior, I had, what, three catches for, like, 99 yards on a touchdown versus FIU, and that was my best stat for that that first year. So, like, everybody on the team was like, damn, you own FIU, don't you? Like, because you always have your best game versus them. I don't know. It was just one of those situations where, it's like, I just had to turn it up because we just came off a loss, and, and my quarterbacks went down. I had two, three quarterbacks go down. We was playing with our fourth-string quarterback. Let that guy to death. He a dog. So it was just like somebody got to step up and make plays. And it was like, throw me the ball. Just throw me the ball and let me work. And it just panned out. And that was like my most receptions that season because I had eight receptions that game. And I was just like, man, I'm trying to crave everything I can touch. Pretty much what it was. That's awesome, man. Oh, you definitely had some great highlights. I was looking at some of the highlights the other day from that game because – when I saw the 223 yards, I had I had to take a look, and you definitely tore them up. And uh, you were mentioning before, you know, how last year you were supposed to be that guy, and how you were trying to learn the playbook and all this stuff. Uh, obviously, now you're going to the SEC. Automatically means that you're a high high level receiver. You don't get to a thousand yards in a season without being a high level receiver. Uh, so talk to me real quick about the mindset. Uh, as that guy trying to make those plays for your team? Because obviously you got the, the corners are trying to lock you down. You know, linebackers are coming for your head. Uh, how do you how do you as a receiver find ways to get yourself open to create those plays for your team and continue after catching the ball, continuing to get those yards? Uh, my, my trainer, you... He'll tell me like you gotta you gotta have a nose for the end for the end zone. You gotta want want it every time you get you get the ball. So that's how I like try to make make those yards after catch is like get the ball and like every catch I'm trying to score or take it to the crib. And as far as being that guy, it really just come with with being in a great system like Levy system. I'm that's one of the big reasons I came here is because like I believe in what Coach Levy got going. Coach Levy, like he he just has a, a great mind for for the offensive game, and he's gonna get me and my teammates the ball, and we're just gonna dominate. And we got a lot of things going that we are gonna show the world about Mississippi State. But as far as being that guy, you I personally feel like you can be that guy, but you need a support staff. You can't just you can't battle everything by yourself because then if if you're the only person going off, like. They just gonna roll that safety over the top or sit that linebacker in that hole and then you getting double team, triple team. So I feel like as far as being that guy, you just you just need a whole village to like make this football thing work. You can't you can't do it all alone. Spoken like a true leader right there. That's that's awesome that you said that, man. And obviously you guys had some really good weapons on the team. Yeah, you talked highly about your quarterbacks, you know, one through four. You guys end up playing with the four. I didn't realize you played with the four string quarterback. That's crazy. Uh, so, you know, props to him for stepping up. Uh, but obviously the past season as a whole, three and nine overall, ended up placing six in Conference USA. Uh, like you said, it just sometimes, you know, it doesn't fall your way. You, you guys had a very tough schedule. You ended up playing, uh, I believe Northwestern was on your schedule. Uh, so some Power Five Conference teams that, you know, were very tough. 
Uh, talk to me real quick about this past season as a whole for you guys. What are the positives that you do take away from a season where you guys ended up not doing as good as you were hoping to? Ain't nowhere else to go but up. <laughs> like, when you down there, you you don't want to stay down there. You don't want to stay with the slums. You want to get out. You want to you want to climb your way out. You you try to build, um, think whatever way you 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 can get get out of there. Like the way I the way I look at it is like, yeah, we had a horrible season, but it was a it was also a learning experience. Like you go back to the film room, go back to the to the field, work on your craft and and dominate the next time you get on the field and come together as as a team and put put your best foot forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now obviously that season is behind you, and now you're not even with the Miners anymore. You're now with the Bulldogs at Mississippi State, going to be competing in the SEC against some of the best competition in the country. Personally, I believe the SEC is the best conference for college football. Uh, Georgia, too. Alabama. Tennessee, all the, I mean, Mississippi State now going to be, I'm going to have to watch all their games just to, you know, go out there and support you. Uh, yeah. But I know obviously that transfer portal decision obviously was very tough for you to make. And I know I've had a lot of friends, obviously, in sports with, because the transfer portal is just so active nowadays, uh, where they've told me what the process has been like for them. What was that process like for you in that transfer portal? Because I'm sure Mississippi State was not the only school hitting you up. That is for sure. What was that uh, process like for you? And what was it about Mississippi State that stuck out where you decided to go to them? Uh, the first day, I, I didn't put my phone down that whole day. It was call after call after call. Um, but it's also a blessing. Like, I can't complain. This is this is the moment that, I, that I've worked for and to get my notice and to get my recollections. I, I, I'm, and I appreciate that and thank God for that. Um, it was it was pretty smooth. I, I had great support staff. That's really what it was. Like I had great people around me telling me the right things that I need to hear and telling me like you you just gotta go to a place that I feel comfortable with and I feel like I'm gonna play and dominate it. And I ultimately chose here once again. Like I said, I believe in what Coach Levy had had going on and I they made a great connection with me. They were they were they were the first school to offer me, if I'm not mistaken, when I when I got into transfer portal. Um, so yeah, Coach Levy, Coach Bump, um, Coach Doobie, all of them, like, dude, Coach Doobie was on my line 24-7, he'll call me on the road, like, we'll conversate, and then they, uh, I just had, and then they, they got, um, Blake Shapin, um, from Baylor, and me and Blake got on the phone, we talked, we talked for a while, we linked up, when he took his OV, I ultimately came the next day after, and we talked in person, and I was just, I told my parents, like, I don't need to go on any more visits. That's why I ain't going no more visits. I only took two visits. And I was like, I, I'm pretty sure I know where I want to be at. I'm pretty sure Coach Levy is going to get me where I need to be at. And that's where, that's where we at. Absolutely, man. It sounds like you have a lot of trust in those coaches and your uh, current teammates now. Uh, and obviously, you guys are preparing for this upcoming season. Like I mentioned, SEC, tough competition every single week. Uh Talk to me real quick about your expectations for playing at this level. Because obviously you played in a good conference in conference. I want to dominate. <laughs> I want to dominate and I want to get, like, I I feel like I'm still highly disrespected after the stats that I put up. I, I personally feel like, I, yes, I got a little bit of recon, uh, a recognition from, from what I did, but they still underestimating what I can do. And I just want to show them that I can dominate the best conference of college football. And that's really what I'm going to do. And I'm going to just go in there and torture them every day and let the, let the uh, Lord take care of everything else. Absolutely, man. I'm sure I'll be seeing you in the NFL here very soon after this season. I mean, yes, if I get another thousand yard plus season, it wouldn't surprise me with as, how fast you are, especially after watching those highlights against FIU. But I know you're always trying to get better. Obviously, every player is. And SEC, those guys are, like you said, everybody's coming after your spot. Everybody wants to get that starting nod, be, in, you know, be on the field to where they can show what they can do. How yeah. are you preparing for this upcoming season to where you can be that you know, highlight guy, that star receiver, uh, that big contributor for the Bulldogs? This is well overlooked for, from a receiver standpoint because I feel like a lot of people think you need to be on the field 24-7, which you do, but you need to get on that playbook. That playbook is really where it's at. Once you can 
master the playbook like the back of your hand. You you can figure everything out. So like right now, it's a whole new system for me, not just me, but the whole offense. So mastering the playbook as fast as I can, knowing the playbook, knowing what's going on to where like I can jump in at any spot that they need me to be at is is my biggest um, target right now. Uh, and then I'm also trying to get two to 300 catches on the jug machine every day with my teammates. And I'm blessed to have great teammates that some days I might not want to move off my bed. They calling me like, hey, yo, we need we need to get our catches in. Like, come on, get off the bed. Like, let's let's go get let's go get some work. So I'm I'm like I said, I'm great. I'm I'm blessed to have like a great support staff around me. Uh I'm also on the field. The quarterback, Blake, um, Blake, Chris, all of them, they're always ready to work, ready to throw, ready to run routes so that we can get our timing down. And one thing I really love about Mississippi State and the whole program is their strength and um, conditioning staff. Like I feel, I I haven't touched two hundred pounds since I've been in college, and so, um, right now I just hit two hundred, and I, it's not no sloppy two hundred. I can really move it because we work on on our speed and acceleration, and we got a great uh, speed and acceleration coach. And yeah, just stacking those little days, getting one one percent, one to six percent better every day, and ultimately dominating when the time comes. That's awesome, and I can't wait to see what you do on the field this upcoming season for Mississippi State. No doubt in my mind, you're going to be you're going to be juking some people out, getting those catches, getting those touchdowns, and I, hopefully, I see another thousand yard plus season from you, man. So, congrats! Yeah, on you, great, congrats on a great career so far, and best of luck this upcoming season. And thanks so much for doing this interview with me, man. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.